would like to call to order the May 20th, 2006, 2019 Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners regular meeting. Welcome to everyone. Um, if you would please stand and join me with, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> We're happy to have with us tonight the Reverend Sheldon Davis from Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church for our invocation. Good evening. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this, another day that you have graciously blessed us with. We ask and pray that your blessing will be upon each and every individual here. We pray that you would do all that you have allowed us to do. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. We pray that just this commission would be the very best commission that we ever had here in Cabarrus County. And God, we pray for your blessing be upon the county of Cabarrus, the state of North Carolina, and God bless America one more time. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Davis. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Uh, first up, we have the approval or correction of our minutes, and you all have a copy of those before you. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes, and we move to approval of the agenda which you also have in front of you tonight. Do I hear a motion to approve the meeting agenda, including the changes on page 36? Move for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. <clears throat> that motion passes, and we move to <coughs> recognitions and presentations. Uh, first up, from Active <coughs> Living in Parks, Freedom Award Project, and we're happy to have Byron Hagler and Joshua Kaufman for that presentation. Good evening. Thank you so much for this time to recognize yet another service project that we've been so fortunate to receive. And I have Joshua Kaufman here to uh, tell you the, a little bit about the details of that project and to recognize this individual. Thank you. Thank you all. And I'd like to have Jonah Hill come on up. Um, Jonah's part of the Trail Life group uh, here in the county, and he came to me about a year ago and uh, was talking about doing a Freedom Award. Uh, it's the Trail Life version of the Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts. Um, and he mentioned about uh, wanting to put in an orienteering course. And when we were talking, I was like, that sounds like a great idea because of all the technology and GPS, people just don't know how to use a compass to find their way around. Um, so he came out. He put in two courses. The first one's a beginner, sort of like an intro of how to, how to do it, how to get around in the woods. He put up 10 uh, marks for that. And then he put in an intermediate course as well in the park. And so far I know we've had at least four other Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Trail Life, American Heritage use uh, the orienteering in the, in the past five or six months. And um, with that, I'd like to have uh, recognize Jonah Hill for um, his Freedom Award project. And thank you. All right, thank you all. Right. Thank you, and thank you, Jonah, for your contribution to our Cabarrus County Parks. Uh, next, from Soil and Water, our annual conservation contest winners. We're glad to have Tammy Rimsberg and Kelly Sifford for that presentation. <clears throat> Good evening. Every year, Cabrera Soil and Water Conservation District holds a conservation contest for grades pre-K to ninth grade. We actually added the pre-K through two this year. Um, and middle and high school teams um, also, or 
teens also have the opportunity to participate in the Envirothon contest. We would like to thank the commissioners and county administration for supporting the district so that these students can participate in these incredible learning experiences. This year we had four schools with nine teams participate in Envirothon and we also had over 2,000 students participating in the other contests in our district, area, and state competitions. Um, only a handful of those 23 winners could be with us tonight, but we would like to recognize them for all their hard work and also thank the teachers and administrators that helped to make it happen. So um, I would like to ask, first of all, if teachers or administrators are in the audience, if they could please stand or wave if you're already standing. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and then I'm going to call up the students, and if parents or teachers would like to come up with them, they're welcome to do that. Um, the first one is Isabella Stewart. She is our kindergarten bookmark contest winner, the first ever. Um, she did a great job making her bookmark, and she is from Patriot STEM Elementary School. Would you like to go say thank you to them? All right. Thank you, Isabella. All right, our next winner is Rui Shaw from Carolina International School. She was our first grade bookmark contest winner. And these students already got their awards at our awards banquet, so this is their secondary recognition. All right, and then we also have Naomi Abriz Gonzalez, who is from CC Griffin Middle School, and she was our sixth grade first place poster contest winner. Naomi. Two other students who said they were coming is Prit, Prit or Sarah. Did they? Make <clears throat> I don't think they did. Okay. The last person that I would like to introduce to you, um, you met last year, but um, she actually went on um, to win the state elementary conservation teacher of the year, and that's Mary Ferguson with Patriot STEM, and she just has a couple of words to say to you guys. Come on up, Mary. I'd just like to say um, thank you to the board for um, funding the uh, soil and water conservation program. It's been an outstanding program for our school, for our kids to learn about how important soil is to our to everyone in our um, world. And uh, we've been participating in the poster contest for years now. We've had a couple first place winners. It's been a really great experience for our children. And so when they opened it up to do the bookmark, um, contest this year for K through two, we were thrilled. We had all 1,100 kids in our school participate in this contest. And um, I know that uh, Isabella had to be as surprised as I was to see her bookmarks at the banquet that night and um, quite an, uh, an experience for the students um, to be able to participate in that. So thank you. Thank you, that's all we have. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to have all of you with us. Um, I was able to attend that awards banquet and there are quite, quite a few more outstanding young people involved in that program. And now we move to recognition of graduating members of our youth commission and we're happy to have Tracy LeCompte. Good evening, everyone. 
My name is Tracy LeCompte. I'm the County 4-H agent. So it is my pleasure that I get to serve as the adult who gives leadership to the Cabarrus County Youth Commission. As a 4-H club, um, we focus on citizenship, civic action, and education, learning more about the local government, and you all know this because we've worked directly with you, so thank you all for your support in this, um, not only to our commissioners, um, Commissioner Kiger especially for being our liaison to this committee, um, to Mike Downs for his constant support of the 4-H program overall and um, here with the Youth Commission, but also through the various county partners that we've met with. Um, the Youth Commissioners and I have trucked all over the county learning all kinds of different things through our departments and our community partners. So thank you all for um, offering this learning experience to our um, high school youth. We currently have 14 members on the board this year. Um, six of them are graduating. Um, we have two that their terms are expiring. Um, so we are currently seeking youth from all area high schools. Um, you can apply on the Cabarrus County website on the Youth Commission page there. So we look forward to having um, new applications uh, for rising high school students. So that includes all the eighth graders that are out there that want to be involved in the community and we look forward to those applications. Um, with that, I will turn it over to our current president, Avery Calkins, if you'll come up and she will address you. Good evening, everyone. The first thing I would like to do is thank the commissioners for giving the Youth Commission this amazing opportunity. Not only has this program opened our eyes to um, the behind the scenes in Cabarrus County government, but has also provided us with so many amazing connections and opportunities. I would also like to thank Ms. Lacan for all she has done for the Youth Commission, such as planning our monthly meetings. This past year, Youth Commission has visited facilities such as the County Jail, Human Service Center, and the Courthouse. We also have been able to sit in on every single Board of Commissioners meeting. This past year has been great, um, has been great feedback wise as we are able to represent the youth of Cabarrus County by sitting in on the census committee and county strategic planning meeting. Through these things, the youth commissioners have learned the ins and outs of our local government and exactly how things are run in Cabarrus County. Next year, I hope the I hope the youth commissioners get more involved in the 2020 census and early registration on voting. Um, over the past two years, I enjoyed my term and it has been an honor serving and working with all of you. Now I would like to invite up our rising seniors and outgoing members to share their future <coughs> plans. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Jackson Lambert, and I'm proud to represent Central Cabarrus High School on the Cabarrus County Youth Commission. Um, after graduating, I plan on attending Catawba College and studying business administration. And thank you all for all that you've done for the Youth Commission. I know that you all put in a great deal of effort to support it, and it's been a great pleasure to serve on the Youth Commission for the past two years. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brennan Gillespie. I am the representative for Coxmill High School and I plan to attend Kent State University to study aviation science and flight technology. Hello, oh, sorry. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Lance Cagle and uh, I'm from Central Cabarrus High School and I tend to uh, attend the United States Naval Academy. My name is Avery Calkins. I attend Hickory Ridge High School and I attend I am planning on attending the University of North Carolina at Wilmington to study nursing. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. We appreciate everything that you have done for us to help us over the years. It's been great having you at the front with us. Uh, and we've gone to you a couple times for advice as well, and we appreciate that. Did you have something else? If you will then excuse us to go on, we'll be <laughs> excusing us from this meeting and plan our next year. Exactly. Great. Thank you. We appreciate everything y'all have done and wish you the best going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we are happy to have Marcella Beam from the Cabarrus Health Alliance for the 2018 State of the County Health Report. Yes, sir. Do you all have copies? I've brought some for you if you don't have them. All right, perfect. All right, good evening. Um, 
Um, if you remember around this time last year, I came and presented the 2017 State of the County Health Report. Um, this report is done in the off years between the needs assessment cycles. So our last community needs assessment was 2016. Our next will be 2020. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of touch on some highlights on each page, but you do have a copy to go back. Um, my contact information is in there as well if you have additional questions. Um, the first part on page one kind of goes over the community needs assessment process, that it is a four-year cycle, and then in the interim, we work on different strategies with community partners to address the top priority needs. The bottom section there just kind of gives an overview of Cabarrus County geographically, the municipalities, and also the neighboring counties. If you'll turn to page two, this will kind of jump right into some data. Um, our top three priority needs in 2016 were substance use, mental health, and childhood obesity. So this will give you an update on data as well as initiatives that have gone on in the county. A couple of things I'll point out. Um, a data set that we used previously by SAMHSA, which is the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, they actually changed the way that they administered the survey and they took out the question about illicit drug use. What they found is that because commonly illicit drugs that are used are marijuana, um, and that is now legal in several states in the nation that they felt like respondents weren't giving accurate responses because of how they were defining it in their state. So they've removed that question. So that's why you've now seen it split out among marijuana, heroin, and cocaine. Um, that's for 12 to 17 years old. Where there are stars, it meant that our responses in our region were so low that there was not enough that they had to suppress the data. Um, and then if you'll notice the next data set there is Cabarrus County EMS, number of patients administered Narcan. Uh, a lot of community focused initiatives here in Cabarrus County have been around the opiate crisis. So you'll see in 2016, there was 163 um, opiate specific calls. In 2017, 418, and then it dropped almost in half in 2018 to 236. The next section is going to give you more specifics and background on each of the strategies that have gone on over the last year. Um, there were a lot more strategies that we had as well in 2017, so I'm happy to share that report if you kind of want to see a comprehensive look, but this just is 20, 2018 information. The next section looks at mental health, which is obviously a, a big focus for you all as the county commissioners as well. Um, and so Carolina's healthcare system Northeast was able to share their ED admission data um, for psychiatric patients. So if you'll see, we've got data back to 2015 through 2018. And from 2017 to 2018, we did see a drop in every age category except for geriatric geriatric psych patients. Um, and that is because Northeast is known as the geriatric um, facility for the footprint of Carolina's healthcare system or atrium health. So oftentimes geriatric psychiatric patients are transported to Northeast. So that's why we've seen a sl small uptick in the number of patients there. The next section again goes into more mental health related initiatives um, such as the Stepping Up Initiative, which you all have been huge advocates of um, and has done great work in the jails with connecting individuals to services upon release as well. The next section is childhood obesity. So this is data going back to 2013 from Carolina's Healthcare System's EMR, so their electronic medical records, all the way to 2017. Um, we've pretty much stabilized for the most part. The only age range that we saw a small increase was two to four. 20% um, of children two to four in Cabarrus County are known as overweight or obese. Um, so that puts them in the 85th percentile for BMI or higher. Um, some initiatives there are Smarter Lunchrooms Movement, which has been a huge success um, in Cabarrus County and Kannapolis City Schools, where they actually work with the cafeteria managers and staff to implement what are called behavioral economics. So they actually put fruit in bowls, or they may give them cute names for elementary schools like outrageous oranges or awesome apples to really try and get the students to, to select those items instead of other things. So you can see there the designations for the, for the local schools. Um, a couple others would be the Cabarrus Play and Grow Map, which the Cabarrus County Convention and Visitors Bureau helped to fund. Um, it went out to most of the elementary school students at the kickoff of school, and it was this big, colorful map to let parents know where they can go for parks and recreation, community gardens, farmers markets, arts, um, just everything to hopefully get students to peer pressure their parents to take them outside and be active. Um, the next page there, so this is now on page six, again looks at population growth. I think that's going to continue to be a trend. Um, people want to come to Cabarrus County. They want to access the resources in the community that we have here. Um, so that is something that I'm sure you all are way more aware of than I am when it comes to the numbers. But I feel like every time I look at the population, it's grown by about four to 6,000. 
um, mortality and morbidity data. The only things I'll highlight here, you can see there's a couple of cells that are highlighted in blue, um, unintentional poisoning, uh, mortality rate per 100,000, and then unintentional injuries, excluding motor vehicles. The reason those are highlighted in blue is they do include opiate-related overdose deaths. Um, so we did see an increase in both of those categories. Um, from 2017, uh, for unintentional poisoning mortality, it was 13.8, and then it jumped to 19.6. And then for unintentional injuries, which did not include motor vehicle, it jumped from 37.1 to 42.4. Um, my hope is that next year when I'm here to share with you that we'll see decreases there since we've seen local decreases um, in EMS numbers. The last couple of pages, the first is going to be emerging trends. Um, last year in January, um, EMS responded to 18 different students in crisis at the schools because of Juul usage. Um, if you'll notice, there's an image there to the right. Those are electronic vaping devices. It looks like a small flash drive. Um, at the time, Alan Thompson um, Sheriff Riley, now I'm remembering everyone because they've retired, but um, they all um, came together and put out a big, broad message through the media, through the parents, through the Connect Ed, through the school system um, to let everyone know the dangers of using electronic cigarettes and then specifically the synthetic CBD oil that w students were putting inside those devices. Um, there's a couple of new initiatives, um, peer support specialists. There is one housed at Cabarrus Health Alliance, and then there are two housed at um, Atrium Health Northeast, and they work with an, individuals who may have experienced an overdose. Um, and then El Puente Hispano, which is our local um, nonprofit that started here in the county to really focus on the needs of the Hispanic community. The last um, community awareness just goes into going out to our local municipalities, um, raising awareness about the community health report and what the outcomes are. Are there any questions? So on page three, yes. where you said about the um, total geriatric, that we were the main hospital for that, mm -hmm. what put us in that position? I mean, what, what do we offer that make us that? I think we just so I, from my understanding, and I don't want, if anyone from Carolina's Healthcare is here, you can feel free to chime in, but my understanding is they've kind of specialized their different hospitals throughout their region so that they have specialized care and individuals there that can, hi, that can offer a heightened level of service. Um, so there is one that has maybe pediatric, psychiatric patients, and ours may be being transported there, but that's, that's my low level or high level understanding. But I'd be happy to follow up and get you a more specific answer. Only a comment, Marcella, uh, and, w and once again, thanks for all the hard, this is a lot of hard work, you guys, putting this all together. Thank you. Yeah. But I was glad to see the opioid calls down, the opioid deaths down, and um, there's a lot of different factors that help make that come down. Yes. And the mental health advisory, I think, and then the, the uh, inclusion of Narcan on the EMS vehicles, and uh, just basically public awareness. And, uh, you know, we went from being uh, number one, I think, probably in 2017, number one in the state of North Carolina with the most ER uh, visits from opioid overdoses. And so we've not only on the top ten now, probably. I don't know where we are, but we have definitely made giant strides for that. And I appreciate you and all your effort and my fellow commissioners as well for being open-minded to a uh, what could have been a serious epidemic that we have uh, brought under control at least for right now yeah. thank you yeah absolutely well and i will say i'm the one that puts it on paper but i am not the one doing all the things that are happening in our community and i would say to you all and anyone else if you can think of a department and agency and organization in our county they are probably helping to work on something within this county to improve the health of residents especially when it comes to opiates so i just want to add i am now a youth mental health first aid trainer yay and i will be co-presenting next week to a group of parents at Cox Mill High School. So I'm nervous. It'll be great. Spending a lot of time preparing uh, with their counselor. So I'm excited for that. And it's a, um, a push for Cabarrus County Schools. I think about 20 of us were trained. And um, so we'll be doing a lot of youth mental health first aid training within the district, I'm sure. But yeah. I'm really looking forward to next week. No, that's, that's doing amazing. My first, first, it's a, you know, as you know, it's eight hours worth of training. So it's two four hour days and a lot of material. So I'm looking forward. I was lucky enough to be asked to do the training and now lucky enough to be asked to co-present with uh, Lisa Landon at Cox Mill. So. 
Yeah, yeah, next week. That's great. And I think that goes to show, again, a commissioner, a school staff that's going out there and doing far above and beyond, I think, what, what the community would think or expect from them. And I think that just is what makes Cabarrus a great place and why we see much, so much change and improvement over time. So good luck. <laughs> It'll be good. Marcella, one question on, um, I think on page two, on the opioid specific calls. Mm -hmm. The significant drop that we experienced between 17 and 18, uh, do you think that had uh, the, the fact that some of the Narcan kits were distributed to the public, so that prevented those EMS calls because people could deal with those situations. Absolutely. So um, when um, when it was written in that there was a standing order for naloxone to be able to give, be given out without a prescription, I think that's the exact kind of turn of the curve that we saw there. Um, people are carrying them around just like they would carry around an EpiPen um, right. and probably even more so because you don't know when you would engage with someone. So I would definitely say um, we have participants at the syringe exchange program at the Health Alliance that we provide Narcan kits to and they will say that they we report back if they have used one that that's been provided to them, um, and oftentimes they will, we also ask, did you call EMS? So they may say yes or no, depending upon the situation, but I definitely think it's it's a reason for a decrease in EMS-related calls as well as opiate-related deaths. It's just the ease of access. You can go to your local Walgreens, um, Canon Pharmacy, Moose Pharmacy, and typically ask for one, and you don't have to have a prescription for it. Right. I'm in the process of reading a book about opioid addiction and that very much falls in line. There's, there's some criticism in the book about some communities that do not make those resources available for, for various reasons. So I'm very proud that, that we have and that it's made that positive impact. Absolutely. Right. Okay, any other questions for Marcella? Just real quick, the medication take back day, I know we had in 18. Did, is there another one scheduled in 19? Did we already? So there would have been one in April. Um, our Substance Use Coalition is actually meeting tonight, and they're looking at some different strategies as well. There are mail-back programs that people can get a pouch from their pharmacy and they can put their medications in and then they have them mailed off. Um, we've had some great turnout at some of the events. Usually we have anywhere from eight to nine locations and we partner with the Sheriff's Office, Concord and Kannapolis PD. Um, the last one we did in October, it did not have as large of a turnout. Um, which hopefully is the fact that people are using the drop boxes that are available or they've already been clearing them out now for several years. Um, we can definitely plan one and we do have a community. Um, if you are hosting a community event and would like a medication take back in conjunction with that, there's a form online through the fire marshal's office and then Kristen Klingelsmith at CHA receives that and she makes sure to connect you to the law enforcement agency who needs to be out there for the event. Um, so even if we don't have a DEA take back one, we are always open to hosting them along with other community events. Uh -huh. Great. Right. Thank you so much yes, for being thank with you all. us and thank you for the report. Absolutely. Okay, we move now to item five from Human Resources. Um, one of the things that we brag about in Cabarrus County is the fact that we have such qualified and experienced staff. Uh, the downside of that is when we have people that have been with us for so many years, They've earned the opportunity to retire and leave us. So we don't like that part. We like it for them, but not for us. Uh, and so tonight we're recognizing senior deputy county manager, Pamela Dubois, on her retirement from Cabarrus County government. And I think county manager Mike Downs has some comments to make. Yeah, I just want to go through a sort of a, a history of Pam's career here. And hopefully that's okay with Pam. So. So back in 1960, Pam started, no, sorry. <laughs> but Pam, Pam graduated from the University of South Carolina with a degree in accounting. Uh, she moved on after that to, to uh, become a CPA, a licensed CPA in 1990, right? And she started working here in Cabarrus County, as uh, Commissioner Moore said, in 1988 as an accountant two. Accountant, then an accountant two. And then she moved on to uh, a county manager within the finance department the assistant finance director, and then ultimately the finance director. And then uh, we got smart and moved her over to the county manager's office, and she's been the, she was a deputy county manager, named that in 04, um, administration, and then now, as she will be retiring, she is the senior deputy county manager in charge of um, all different departments and, and the budget and, and all sorts of things there. But Pam started as a CPA, and. And, and as a CPA, and when she came to the county, she helped the county become very stable in its financial 
uh, as a financial institution. She, she implemented and was the creator of our um, rolling five-year plan that we still use today. It's been many years and it's been one of the major tools that we use in our budgeting process. And she's been through numerous debt issuances uh, because we have been building a lot of schools and arenas and, and parks and others that require us to go out and issue debt. And along with the debt, again, uh, the capital project funding through her leadership, Cabarrus County has earned the Government Finance Officer Association's Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for 16 consecutive years. And the GFA Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial, Re Financial Reporting for 29 consecutive years. So 29 of Pam's 30 years we have won that award. She serves on the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Committee where she advises other counties <clears throat> on their financial best practices and the North Carolina Finance Certification Program from which she received her certification in 1994. She obtained her GFOA of the United States and Canada Certified Finance Officer Certificate in 2001. She currently represents uh, Cabarrus County on the, the Cabarrus County Convention and Visitors Bureau and is currently serving as the president, right? Or the chairman of the board, yeah, so for a few more months. Uh, she's been uh, back here in Cabarrus and she's a staunch advocate for our employee health programs, our health and wellness programs. She's played a major role in, in really shaping our health and insurance plans to become cost effective for the county. And as a result, we're, we're experiencing low uh, increases over the last several years. In 2014, 16, and 17, the Business Journal recognized Pam as the healthiest CEO in Charlotte, and that was part of their healthiest pro employer program. And she's been involved and is involved in her local community. She's, again, served five years on the Conventioners Visitors Bureau, the Mental Health Advisory Council. She's a past president of the Government Finance <coughs> Officers Association. She's very active in her church, including elder orphan care. This is the fun one here. She serves as uh, the parking lot attendant. And she rules the roost out there. I tell you, those guys, are, she's got them hopping. And, <laughs> and let's see, and, on the, and now the Building and Grounds Committee. She has a passion about causes ranging from veterans to ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, animals and children, and especially those with special needs and she can be found volunteering in numerous groups and looks forward to continuing these passions as a retiree. And um, she is truly the definition of a servant leader. I'm not gonna cry either, but we've, <laughs> <laughs> we've been together for 31 years or so here. So she's family as well. And I just thought of some words, a friend, which is probably the, the best one, a teacher, a mentor, a giver, and a leader. So with that, I'll turn it back over there to you. Congratulations, Pam. Great. Thank, thank you for those words. As you can tell, Pam has made a great contribution not only to Cabarrus County government, but to Cabarrus County as a community and, and all those people that associate with her. And now Commissioner Honeycutt has a presentation for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have one for you in recognition of your 31 years of service to Cabarrus County and the citizens, your own special clock. I don't think it has an alarm on it, so you won't have to worry about having to get up. So, and, and the way I hear this relationship is that you are his work wife. Yes. <laughs> and they coordinate and keep him in line, right? That's for yes. sure. We well, try. <laughs> when uh, Mike said he was going to do the history of your thing, I thought, well, we will be here till midnight, because there is no way that everything that you've done for this community can be recapped. Your passion, your commitment, your dedication to service and to making this place a better community to live in, your footprint, your handprints will be on here for a long time to come, and you've made it better for all of us. And as a commissioner who has had the opportunity to work with you this way, I've had always complete confidence in the financials, and that is a big, relief and I say that probably all of us feel the same way 
and we are going to miss you, but we wish you the absolute best, and you know where to find us every first and third Monday. Yes. <laughs> On YouTube. Yeah, well, no, no. <laughs> we'll save a seat for you. So Thank We you. appreciate you, and we miss you, and we love you. Thank you very much. Yep. I'd like to make a quick comment, if, yes, if I could. Are you going to she's, she's speak? Got a video for us. So. Oh, a video. Well, that's even better. I'm a little I'll smarter wait. than Mike. I'm not talking. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Well, I don't want to uh, no, no, no. go out of, out of line, but yeah, I just on a personal note, I just wanted to say when I was the chairman over at the school board, and at that time Commissioner Poole was the chairman of this board. The both of you, along with County Manager Downs, and, and Lynn spent the previous year prior to that, but you had a, and this is hard to articulate, but you had an incredible knack of being able to provide information, ask questions, get us to ask questions, and then sort of work through some problems and issues that made my job so much easier over on that side, just knowing that we were the interests that we had were in good hands over on your desk. So I, from a personal, selfish standpoint, cannot tell you how much I appreciated that because that was a tough year. And uh, I really do appreciate all that you did. 16 months. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much. Thanks, Great. Does anybody else have comments they'd like to make to well, pay? I have to say just a couple of things, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. No. You know, I, prior to the year 2000, I didn't know Pam. So I was sitting here thinking, you know, it's been almost 20 years. And I'm saying, where did that 20 years go? But Pam, you've always been there. You never shirked a task. When I was the chairman of the school board, I worked with you during that period of time. And Blake was the vice chair. And we, we've all, these three here, have surely served us on the school board. And with Pam served in her capacity, you was always there. You always helped us get through between you and Kelly Klutz, and before that, Gene Jordan, we always managed to get through. And I can say that you will be greatly more than missed here. You know that already. You will be missed more than you can ever imagine here. But um, it's just like life, it goes on. And I hope that yours goes on in many, many, many years to come, and you and Steve can enjoy your retirement together. Thank you, Pam, for everything. Well, I can say ditto to all those things. Uh, certainly, a, a, a lot of the, the facts that, that, that Mike talked about um, made a big difference. And, and I, I, I lived through those 16 months with you. And I can say that on the seven years that, that I have served as a commissioner, you have been an invaluable resource. I mean, that's the place where I always knew if I, if I, I said, well, ask Pam, call Pam. And Pam's response is always, um, I don't have, most of the time she knows the answer, but when she doesn't, she says, I know where I can get that for you very quickly. And that, uh, that means a lot and it has been invaluable. So thank you so much and wish you uh, the best. I hope that, that your husband, Steve, can take on the role of keeping you in line. Uh, He's shaking his head no, so I'm not sure if he's up to the challenge, so maybe it'll have to be the other, other way around. But uh, you certainly have, have <clears throat> deserved your retirement, and we appreciate sincerely everything that you have done for us individually and for Cabarrus County. And now, if there are no more comments, I think we have a video to view. <clears throat> Good evening. I want to take this opportunity to thank the citizens of Cabarrus County for allowing me to serve them over the past 30 years. It's been an honor and a privilege. Cabarrus County will always be home for me and soon I will be starting a new chapter of my life. I am grateful for the support of the community, the commissioners, and the staff and management of Cabarrus County. This county cares what goes on in local government. 
Many of the current commissioners have embraced this community by bringing the local officials together for communication and sharing of ideas. I have learned how rare this is in North Carolina and other states. I want to thank each employee for what they do for Cabarrus County. It has been a pleasure working with each and every one of you. I will continue to pray for the continued success of Cabarrus County and all the individuals who make it successful. God bless each and every one of you and thank you for the opportunity once again for serving Cabarrus County. Thank you, Pam. That was very nice. You, you were very smart. The rest of us had to hold back our emotions, and you were able to do it in a different way. Okay, and I think that uh, Donna Carpenter from the Convention and Visitors Bureau has a presentation for you as well. Just a very quick one. Um, while all the tears are happening, um, I had to redo this. I want you to open it really quick. Um, we care so much about Ms. Pam. Pam has brought to the Convention and Visitors Bureau Board of Directors a sense of urgency and um, making sure that we are um, always open and that our books are right. She's taught John Mills a million things. John is really, really happy um, that she's there. And unlike you all, you're getting ready to say goodbye. Well, our gift to Pam today... <laughs> And I would like to put this on her so she can take her, you can take your badge off now. I'm just kidding, you don't have to. Uh, yeah, she's, she's still got a few days left. We so. have a, yeah, okay. We have a, um, a new name tag. We've never done this for anyone else, actually. Only staff has this. But Pam now has an official name badge for the Convention of Visitors Bureau in that she is our lifetime volunteer at the Cabarrus CVB. So, there you go, Pam. So thank you very much, and thank you, Pam. We thank love you. you. Great. Thank you. thank you, Donna. Okay, we are happy to have Tony Miller with us for a Memorial Day proclamation. Good evening. Mr. Chairman and members of the Board of Commissioners, on behalf of Veterans Services, I'd like to say thank you for this opportunity for the Memorial Day Proclamation for 2019. Right. Whereas our ancestors shaped the structure of our political system, laid the groundwork for higher discoveries in science and medical research, started long-lasting traditions that enriched our heritage and fought in wars so that future generations would have freedom, and whereas it is important to cherish the memories of our friends and family members who have died and to remember their contributions toward making our lives, making our lives better. And whereas the veterans who fought and died in our, for our country helped preserve the freedom and rights guaranteed to all people under the U.S. Constitution. And whereas on Memorial Day, Americans remember the enormous debt of gratitude we owe to our veterans who have lost their lives in the defense of freedom and pursuit of peace, and we reflect on the past and renew our patriotism so that we may continue to live in freedom and seek peace, that our veterans will not have died in vain. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners do hereby recognize May 27th 2019 as Memorial Day 2019 in Cabarrus County and urges all residents in the county to take time on this special day of remembrance to honor those who have sacrificed and died to improve our quality of life and to strengthen our nation. Adopted this 20th day of May 2019, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion to adopt the proclamation for Memorial Day 2019? So motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you. All right, and I just have a little history I would like to share yes, about Memorial Day also. Memorial Day is an American holiday observed in, on the last Monday of May, honoring the men and women who died while serving in, in the U.S. military. 
The Civil War, which ended in spring of 1865, claimed more lives than any conflict in U.S. history and required the establishment of the country's first national cemeteries. It is unclear exactly tradition, I'm sorry, excuse me, the first official Memorial Day, the first national celebration of Memorial Day, originally known as Decoration Day, took place May 30th, 1868 at Arlington National Cemetery. It is unclear where exactly this tradition originated. Numerous different communities may have independently initiated the memorial gatherings. Nevertheless, in 1966, the federal government declared Waterloo, New York, the official birthplace of Memorial Day. Waterloo, which first celebrated the day on May 5, 1866, was chosen because it hosted an annual community-wide event during which businesses closed and residents decorated the graves of soldiers with flowers and flags. Also on behalf of Memorial Day, I recently, one of my neighbors, uh, they shared a story with me in reference to their nephew. Uh, in 2008 of April, Corporal uh, Jonathan Yale and their nephew, Jordan uh, Herder, were in Iraq, and there was a gentleman or someone driving a truck with 2,000 pounds of explosives, and those two Marines, um, Corporal Yale was getting ready to leave, and Corporal, uh, Lance Corporal uh, Herder had just gotten there, but as this truck was coming, they stood there post, and they stopped the truck in its, in its uh, tracks, but of course it blew up and they were killed and they were both uh, awarded the Navy Medal. And the family recently had given me a shirt that I'd just like to share in reference to the gentleman that was passed away. And this is uh, Lance Corporal uh, Jordan Herder. So I just wanted to make sure we share that because of the sacrifice that all have made for Memorial Day. So I'd like to thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you, <clears throat> and thank you for sharing that with us. Yes. And there will be a number of different Memorial Day uh, ceremonies here in Cabarrus County on Monday. So we hope that uh, everybody will have an opportunity to participate in some of those. All right. Thank you and wishing everyone a happy Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we move now to informal <laughs> public comments and I have several of the yellow cards. Um, if you would, when you come to the microphone, uh, give your name and address. And we have a timer there that gives you three, three minutes for each comment. First is Ben Spencer. Good evening. My name is Ben Spencer. I live at 6123 Village Drive Northwest in Concord. I'm a 19-year veteran teacher of Cabarrus County Schools. I spent my first 17 years at Northwest Middle, and I've spent the last two years teaching at Harris Road Middle School. During the 2008-2009 school year, I had the privilege of serving as the teacher liaison to the Cabarrus County Board of Education. That experience made clear to me the difficult choices that often face our elected officials. So, before I broach the matter that I intend to speak to you about tonight, I would like to thank you for your service. I know that your job entails weighing the needs of different groups within the community, and then making the difficult choices of prioritizing those needs. This is not an easy responsibility, and I'm sure it's not one that you take lightly. According to Niche.com, of the 115 local ed education agencies in North Carolina, Cabarrus County is currently the 10th largest, serving just under 32,000 students. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Cabarrus County is the 13th wealthiest county in North Carolina when taking into consideration per capita income, and ranks seventh when considering median household income. Despite that, Cabarrus County ranks 36th in local teacher supplement pay. This according to the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Although that ranking is higher than it was a few years ago, we still lag considerably behind counties of a similar size and makeup, including Union County, New Hanover County, and Onslow County. Teachers in Cabarrus County make 69% of the average supplement afforded teachers in Union County, 79% of the average supplement afforded teachers in New Hanover County, and 73% of the average supplement afforded teachers in Onslow County. I have long taken great pride in teaching in Cabarrus County. Despite the incredible population growth that I've seen during my ne nearly two decades teaching in the county, I have always felt that my county was one that rose to meet the challenges of an ever-changing and growing community. 
That being said, I, like many of my colleagues, have become increasingly frustrated by the slow pace with which our local government has moved to ensure that teachers in Cabarrus County are paid on a level commensurate with teachers in counties facing similar challenges. As the years pass and we continue to lag behind our counterparts, our schools suffer as the accrued loss of quality teachers to nearby counties continues to build. Later this week, Dr. Lauder will present to you the recommendations of the Cabarrus County Board of Education regarding increasing supplemental pay. As both a parent with a child in Cabarrus County Schools and as a teacher in the school system, I ask you to heed the recommendations of Dr. Lauder and the school board and give teachers the full amount proposed. Please don't let another year pass without meeting the needs of our teachers and schools. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, next is Terry Griffith. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Terry Griffith. I live at 817 Oak Trail Circle, Concord, North Carolina. Um, I want to take thank you for your time. I know that it takes a lot of time for you guys to do all the research, to talk to all the people, to listen to all the comments, and we really appreciate that. Um, with Charlotte Mecklenburg having proposed a hike in their teacher supplement to make it the highest in the state, I am concerned as a veteran teacher that Cabarrus County will no longer be competitive with Mecklenburg County in the teaching market. Um, the Charlotte Mecklenburg, um, you know, it's so much easier to talk to middle school students. <laughs> <laughs> um, Charlotte Mecklenburg has proposed a significant hike. They're going to make it so they are now probably one of the top supplements in the state. The concern that I share with you is that the Charlotte Observer has reported that 4.8% of teachers are leaving their districts to go to work in other districts <clears> with <throat> higher supplements. According to the vacancies proposed or vacancies posted in Cabarrus County, we have 23 elementary education positions open, 32 middle school teaching positions open, and 28 high school teaching positions open. When you look at the special ed and the career tech teaching positions, there's 110 teaching positions open in Cabarrus County right now. With Charlotte and Mecklenburg raising their supplement to the highest in the state, I'm concerned that with the number of teachers graduating from schools around here, people aren't just going to look and go like, no brainer. We're not going to Mecklenburg County. Cabarrus County clearly is the clear choice for us. What I'm afraid is outside teachers and outside applicants are going to come in and they're going to look and they're going to go, I can make $500 more a month over here. It, it seems like a no-brainer that way. But they don't understand all of the positive, crazy good elements to Cabarrus County that aren't reported in data and statistics. I'm also concerned as a veteran teacher that teachers will look and go, for $500 more a month, I can spend my last year five years, 10 years in Mecklenburg County because um, I can deal with anything for five years. So what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to fully fund the 1.5% increase for the Cabarrus County teachers. Um, we will work our hearts out to make this the best educational place so that when you're talking to businesses and homeowners in selling them to come to Cabarrus County and come to bring businesses here, we will work our heart out for you and we just ask that you be the visionary leaders for us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Bishop Roland Jordan. Hey, Mr. Chairman, board, citizens, I greet you in Jesus' name. Um, the first thing I want to talk about the nursing home. The nursing home, some of them good and some of them ain't. I got a mother of the church in Five Oak Nursing Home. The whole told her how to hostage. She's in her right mind. She's 98, but she's more sharper than I am. I got a little bit of dimension, and she got dimension, but hers is better than mine. And I went to the police, went to the sheriff's department. The sheriff said, well, the police ain't going to do nothing. They weren't going to do nothing. That's bad. We got these people here, got these good position. And won't do their job to protect and serve our people. Um, 
I called the lawyer, Mr. White, for social service. He called a couple of times, then I called back and had a more word with him. Mr. Downing, he'd been busy. I called him, get an appointment with him. Been about two weeks now, I think. I ain't heard nothing from him. So I need some action done on that, you know. I'm planning on suing. I don't like to sue. The Bible says I can sue my enemies. And on that school, it's good that no one be left behind, but I was slow in school, and I had special help. Some of my kids need special help. Graduate from school, can't hardly read. I expect them to get a job. You know, you need more such and such <coughs> teachers there. That's very, very important, you know. And um, a school, I'm still working on prayer back. I appreciate your support on that. That um, when you took prayer out, a lot of violence, a lot of wrongdoing, what going on. So we ask you, whatever you can do, support that, please do. And I just continue to help Bible Scotia. I know they understand still, but if you can reach out, you know some people got some resources, that mean money. That can help that school out, we appreciate it. I know we got the police brutality. Last week I said a video where police beat this black man down. I seen one threw a couple punches like that. No, we ain't gonna tolerate that. And I ask y'all to do something about that. The man should be fired. You know, no one, I know they, was, they shouldn't cuss police, I understand that. When you get upset, you may cuss. I don't cuss, but I shoot you out real good. That's when I'm gonna borrow from a lot of plays. I ain't no joke, I don't take no mess. But I'm a peacemaker, but I can be a hair raiser too. I thank you for your time and God bless you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, we move now to our consent agenda, and of course this consists of items that were discussed at our meeting two weeks ago in our work session. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval. Is there discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no, and that motion passes. And we move now to new business. Uh, from finance, we have a resolution relating to the installment financing contract for schools and public, public purpose land. And we're happy to have Susan Farrington to talk with us about that. So our next step on our quest to borrow money for the land to, is to hold a public hearing tonight and approve the financing resolution. The installment financing will be used to purchase land for a middle school, a high school, and a senior center slash library. The resolution is not as if for an amount to not to exceed $11 million, but keep in mind we will only borrow the amount that was needed for the purchase of these properties. So the, we're ready for the hearing. Okay. Any questions for Susan before we open the public hearing? Okay. At this time, we'll open the public hearing and invite anyone to the po podium that would like to comment on this proposal. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. And let's see, you need a motion to approve tonight, right? To approve the resolution to approve the resolution. Okay, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion that we approve the financing resolution. Great. Okay, we have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? Okay, if there are none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you, Susan. Okay, now we move to item G2 from the county manager, presentation of the proposed fiscal year 20 Cabarrus County budget. Can and I, I'll turn. Can yes. I have that book? She says my beside a mic. Did you need that mic? What's that? Is the that big book. book. Mm -hmm. Is that your This book? one? Mm -hmm. yeah, Is that your book? I don't know. Well, why'd you put it over here? I don't know. You're going to read it while he's talking. Yeah. I'll go, I'll, I'll go slow. I like, I like to follow the budget message when you're doing it. Okay. okay. I, Sorry. Okay. Right. Honorable Chairman and members of the Board of County Commissioners, it is my honor and privilege to submit the recommended Cabarrus County General Fund budget to you for fiscal year 2020. Staff prepared this budget in accordance with the general statutes of North Carolina and the North Carolina Government Budget and Con 
Control Fiscal, Fiscal Control Act. The Board of Commissioners' mission, vision, and goals continue to provide direction to staff in the creation of this comprehensive and balanced budget. This proposal aligns with the seven priority areas identified during the Board of Commissioners' retreat in February, which include planning, growth, and economic development, communication and transparency, enhanced programs and excellent public service, public safety, transportation, education, mental health, including substance abuse. Acting under the board's guidance and, using, and utilizing responsible planning and budgeting, we have improved services, enhanced partnerships, and monitored, unnecess and monitored unnecessary program expansion, all while maintaining the excellent quality of our residents that our residents expect. As presented, the fiscal year 2020 general operating fund is $269,805,596, which represents a 5.26% increase in spending over the fiscal year 19 adopted budget. Projections indicate that property tax revenues will increase by $6,426,210, or 3.9% and sales tax revenues are projected to increase by $4,478,539, or 2%. Highlights of the fiscal year 2020 proposed budget include additional debt needed. Additional debt service is needed for land purchases for the new Cabarrus County schools, including a middle school and high school. Land is also needed for a library and senior center in the western portion of the county. The debt service projected for these land purchase, purchases is $8.5 million over seven years. The first payment is for $1,478,700 is due in fiscal year 20. Addressing the, addressing the growing capital needs of our school systems, two new schools are currently under construction in Cabarrus County with projected openings in August of 2020. These new schools will address some of the current needs, but there are other immediate needs for additional schools and modernization and replacement of older schools to keep up with population increases. Number three, current school operations. The county will continue to fund the increased cost of ongoing operations of the current facilities at both Cabarrus County Schools and Kannapolis City Schools, and in addition, Rowan Cabarrus, county, Rowan Cabarrus Community College. Continued operations include costs for locally funded positions and benefits, utilities, teacher supplements, and non-certified positions. Continued operations increased by 4.3% for Cabarrus County Schools and Kannapolis City Schools, 16% for Rowan Cabarrus Community College due to the operations and the opening of the Advanced Technology Center. The proposed budget will also increase the local salary the local supplements, salary supplements to 8.25%. Number four, creation of the new positions for Cabarrus County departments to meet additional demands. Human Services requested seven positions to help as case volume and case complexity continue to rise, along with the implementation of the Helping the Underserved, Beloved, and Belong, the hub program that we're familiar with. The HUB program brings governmental, nonprofit, and faith-based agencies together to meet the demands of our growing community's unique social needs. Infrastructure and asset management requested a maintenance planner to assist with renovations of current county facilities to accommodate new or growing services, as well as the transition from new construction projects to preventive maintenance and prevent preventive and planned maintenance efforts. This will help sustain our buildings and our grains, our grounds into the future. <clears throat> the Sheriff's Office created the new Governmental Security Services Division. The Board of Commissioners approved and implemented this division in mid-fiscal year FY19 to monitor daily activities of county-owned and operated facilities, including the downtown parking deck. The Sheriff's Office requested a youth development sergeant to assist with the school resource officers assigned to 19 county schools. The new Sergeant position will assist with the employee to supervisor ratio and workload demands. The animal shelter requested a part-time kennel technician to assist with administering vaccinations, <coughs> excuse me, as well as providing weekend shift coverage. The, 
The county manager's office has requested a business analyst position to assist with the Excella software issues and improve customer support. Excella is the county's online permitting and software system used in conjunction with the municipalities for permitting and inspection services. Emergency management requested an additional fire captain and five firefighter positions to support the proposed 24-7 coverage for squad 410 manpower union, unit. And finally, the Active Living and Parks Department requested a program assistant for special event coverage and program coordination, along with two additional part-time park ranger positions to provide facilities and set up services. Meeting the demands of retaining and attracting strong wor workforce, this need has become more apparent in the several areas, including human services, public safety, construction standards, and facilities maintenance. Cabarrus County strives to offer current and prospective employees market competitive compensation packages. This budget includes funding to implement the recommendations of a market study, market salary study for our general government services areas, which include active living in parks, board of elections, communications and outreach, county manager, fair, finance, human resources, information technologies, technology services, <clears throat> libraries, planning and development, register of deeds, tax department and veteran services. This funding will help retain and recruit qualified employees. <clears throat> Number six, supporting the Board of Commissioners Mental Health Advisory Board. The county remains committed to addressing mental health issues. As the needs increase in our community and throughout the nation, additional services are required. The countywide mental health initiative has participation from representatives of public, private, and nonprofit agencies. The implementation and expansion of the Step and Up program is a desire, is a direct result of the board's efforts. Expanding an already strong collaboration among, elect, among elected officials. These unprecedented, unprecedented efforts resulted in shared programs and services such as joint land use plans, a new library branch in Midland, tax collection services for the city of Concord. These efforts have resulted in cost savings and staff efficiencies. Other collaborative efforts include central permitting with Concord, Harrisburg, and Kannapolis, which enables the county to streamline the building process, revitalization of historic downtown Kannapolis, co-location efforts of the City of Concord Fire Department and Cabarrus County Emergency Medical Services, and Harrisburg's farming, Farmington mixed-use development. Quarterly summits among elected officials and staff continue to provide opportunities for open discussion and cohesive vision. These collaborations make positive fiscal operation and and economic impacts on the county by identifying similar needs and challenges in the county and in the communities in the near future. <coughs> this budget addresses the Board of Commissioners' priority areas. It creates investment in programs and services which result in an investment in our community and a strong commitment to our future. Based on the 2018 U.S. Census, Census Bureau's latest publication, the county continues to grow with an estimated population of 211,000 342 citizens, and Cabarrus County maintains its rank of 11 out of 100 counties in population. This growth in population continues to affect capital and operational needs for both schools and county services. For several years, we have delayed necessary maintenance on county, school, county and school facilities. The proposed FY20 budget addresses some of these needs. It does, excuse me, it does not, however, help fund completion of deferred maintenance projects for the schools or the county. Therefore, I recommend that the, for the fiscal year 2020, 2020 budget to include an ad valorem rate of 74 cent, which is a two cent increase over the current rate of 72 cent. The additional revenues generated from this proposed tax increase address some of these needs in FY20. In FY21, the revenues will help fund the operational needs for the two new Cabarrus County schools scheduled to open in August 2020. The county and school needs are extensive. Future investment in our community is required to maintain facilities and improve our services. As a reference, the median assessed home value in Cabarrus County is about $160,000. For these homeowners, the proposed increase represents approximately $32, $32 a year in taxes. In closing, I would like to thank the Board of Commissioners for their leadership throughout our county, our region, 
our state, and our country. Because of their leadership, Cabarrus County is recognized as an innovative force in government services. Their support of our employees allows Cabarrus County to use creativity and innovation to provide the very best public services. I also want to commend all of the county employees for another successful year of hard work in maintaining the goals and objectives of the commissioners and providing support to the citizens of Cabarrus County. I want to specific, specifically thank our budget manager, Kristen Jones, our budget analyst, Lauren Tiara, our senior deputy county manager, Pam Dubois, our finance director, Susan Farrington, our deputy county manager, Jonathan Marshall, our area manager of operations, Kyle Billifer, our area manager of innovation and technology, Debbie Brandon, and our human resources director, Lundy Covington and all of our 24 department heads <coughs> and all of our approximately 1,200 employees <coughs> for the work that they have done this year. They have all worked hard and extra on this year's budget. Respectfully submitted, Mike Downs. Thank you. <coughs> okay, a, <clears throat> a copy of the proposed budget will be filed in the office to, of the clerk to the board uh, beginning this evening for the public to look at and will also be um, it will be available for public inspection at the Cabarrus County Governmental Center during regular business hours. Uh, the, the proposed budget will also be posted on the county website um, and that's pretty easy to find. We will have budget workshop meetings to be held in the multi-purpose room here in the governmental center uh, one tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock and then another on Thursday at four o'clock. Uh, and then we will, we are scheduling a public hearing on the proposed budget to be held on Monday, June 17th at 6.30 p.m. or as soon thereafter as persons may be heard. Um, and I don't think that requires a motion. I think just an announcement of such. Is that correct? Schedule the public hearing? We do, okay. So then I would entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2020 Cabarrus County budget for Monday, June 17th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That <clears throat> motion passes. Okay, and we move now to reports. And so at this time, we'll receive updates from commission members who serve as liaisons to municipalities or on various other boards and committees. Commissioner Honeycutt. The Senior Center Advisory Council always has great activities going on, and so they give me updates periodically to give to you. The Older Americans Month uh, is May. The theme for 2019 is Connect, Create, and Contribute, and the activities wrap up with a smoothie spinoff. Not sure what that is, but it sounds interesting. Uh, May 29th, 1230 at the Concord Senior Center. Sign up by May 24th. Their annual talent show with the Council on Aging is Wednesday, June 5th at 1230 at the Concord Senior Center. Talent show is free. Lunch is $6 and you need RSVP by June 29th. There's an archery tournament on June 27th. An iFly experience, um, that should be fun. On Tuesday, June 25th, 11.30, $45 per person includes lunch, instruction, and indoor skydiving, flying with high flight. And then the last is uh, Twilight League's bocce cornhole shuffleboard play begins on July 8th, uh, Monday at 5.30 through September 9th. So if you have an interest in any of those, contact the Senior Center and they'll be glad to hook you up. Great, thank you. Any other reports? Okay, I will point out that we have a number of vacancies on various county boards and committees. Uh, those are listed on our website, so we would encourage folks that are interested uh, to contact our clerk or submit the application online if you would like to serve on one of the county boards or committees. 
And we move now to general comments from board members. Mr. Tiger. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I've got two notes of congratulatory of a congratulatory nature. Uh, Concord resident and Cannon School graduate Anna Redding was invited to and participated in the very first Augusta National Women's Amateur Golf Tournament in Augusta, Georgia in April. Invitation was based on world amateur ranking and only about 70 women participated. So that was a uh, phenomenal uh, achievement for her. She, Anna plays her college golf at the University of Virginia where she just recently graduated. And um, also 2015 Cannon School graduate Will Gordon was named the Southeastern Conference Player of the Year for Men's Golf. So Will plays at Vanderbilt University where he also uh, recently graduated. So that uh, is a pretty phenomenal achievement for, uh, if you know, the quality of golf in the Southeastern Conference is as good as anywhere. So that's a uh, great honor for him uh, and great achievement for two people with ties to Concord and Cabarrus County. So congratulations to those two. Thank you, sir, and congratulations to both of them. Any other general comments? Okay, hearing none, we do have need of a closed session tonight. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to go into closed session to discuss pending litigation, economic development, and acquisition of real property as authorized by North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A34 and 5. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, no. We are now in closed session. Thank you.